Welcome to Nodecast Explains. In this explainer, we're diving right into a decision that is going to define Canada's security, our industry, and really our sovereignty for an entire generation. It's a multi-billion dollar question, and it has roots that go back over half a century to a ghost that still haunts our national psyche. To really get a handle on today's debate, we have to talk about the Avro Arrow. For so many of us, that name alone brings up this powerful mix of incredible pride and just a profound sense of loss. It was a moment when Canada was reaching for true greatness and then was forced to let it all go. So picture this. It's the 1950s, and Canada isn't just trying to keep up with the jet age. We were actually poised to lead it. The Royal Canadian Air Force put out a call for an interceptor with requirements that were, seriously, the toughest on the planet. And AV Row Canada delivered. The Arrow wasn't just a plane. It was a masterpiece. And then Black Friday. The entire project killed, just like that. It sent a shockwave through the country and scattered Canada's best and brightest aerospace minds, many of whom, you know, went on to help the Americans put a man on the moon. Now, here's the part that is just a total gut punch, the sheer finality of it. This wasn't just a project cancellation. It felt like a deliberate erasure. The government ordered every single era prototype, every blueprint, every piece of custom tooling to be destroyed a national dream literally cut to pieces with welding torches. It's a wound in our collective memory that has never really healed. And that brings us right here to today. As we stand on the edge of another massive generation-defining investment in our Air Force, the shadow of the arrow is just impossible to ignore. And the question is just hanging there. Have we learned a single thing? Okay, so the official path forward, the one we're on right now, involves buying 88 state-of-the-art, American-made F-35A Lightning II fighters. This is being sold as the biggest, most important investment in our Air Force in more than 30 years. The government's case really rests on a few key pillars. They say that F-35 is absolutely crucial for defending our huge sovereign airspace. They point to its advanced stealth and sensors as a genuine leap into the future. And, maybe most importantly, they say it's essential for working hand-in-glove with our allies in NORAD and NATO, since so many of them are buying the same jet. This isn't just about a plane. It's about keeping our seat at the big table. But, and this is a big but, the full commitment is still very much up in the air. As of right now, Canada's only locked in to buy 16 F-35s. The full purchase of all 88 jets is under a government review, with everyone getting nervous about rising costs and, well, a world that seems to be changing by the minute. This deal is a long way from being done. Because here's the other side of the coin. While the F-35 is being sold as the future, this program has been an absolute lightning rod for controversy and, frankly, for some really blistering criticism from people who definitely know what they're talking about. That's Pierre Spray. He was one of the key designers of the legendary F-16 fighter, one of the most successful jets in history. And his take on the F-35? It's blunt. He thinks the plane is fundamentally broken, right from its very concept. So why would he say that? Well, according to Spray, the root of all the problems is that it was designed by committee. It's trying to be a one-size-fits-all plane for the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines. And the Marines' demand for that special vertical takeoff feature meant they had to stuff a huge heavy lift fan into the middle of the plane. The result, he argues, is an aircraft it's fat, clumsy, and aerodynamically compromised. You know the saying, a jock of all trades, a master of none. Okay, okay, but the defenders of the F-35 always come back to its trump card, stealth. Its ability to be pretty much invisible to enemy radar. This, they say, is what makes it a real game changer. And again, Spray's take is just shocking. He's not just questioning the plane, he's attacking the very core technology that makes it so expensive and so hyped up. And look, he's not the only one saying this. A lot of experts point out that while stealth works pretty well against the high-frequency radars that fighter jets use to target each other, it's basically useless against older, long-wavelength search radars. And guess who never stopped building and perfecting those kinds of radars? Our adversaries, like Russia. So that whole shield of invisibility, it might just have some very big holes in it. So in the middle of this whole messy debate, a really interesting alternative has stepped into the ring. A fighter jet that was built by a northern nation, a lot like ours, with a totally different philosophy. One that feels like it was practically designed for Canada's unique needs. I'm talking about the Swedish Saab Gripen. Okay, let's just put them head to head. The Gripen is faster for one. 
It's built for rough and tumble operations in harsh climates. It can literally take off from a frozen lake or a stretch of highway, perfect for our vast north. It's really optimized for what we do most, defensive patrols. But the biggest difference, it's right there at the bottom, sovereignty and control. And then there's the money. The economics here are just stark. When you look at what it costs just to keep these planes in the sky hour by hour, it's incredible. The F-35 comes in at around $33,000 per flight hour. The Gripen? About $8,000. That means for every single hour an F-35 is in the air, you could fly a Gripen for more than four hours. When you're talking about patrolling the second largest country on Earth, that difference is absolutely massive. And here is the real kicker. This is the part that sounds a whole lot like what we lost with the Arrow. Saab has put an offer on the table to assemble the Gripen in Canada, a deal they say would create thousands of high-tech Canadian jobs for decades, a direct investment in our own aerospace future. And that brings us right to the heart of it. This whole thing goes way beyond speed or stealth or cost per hour. It really just boils down to one single fundamental question, who's in control? This quote is so powerful because of who it comes from. That's Lieutenant General Yvonne Blondin, the former commander of the Royal Canadian Air Force. He was the guy who once recommended that Canada buy the F-35. Now he's warning that relying only on this American jet would be, in his words, irresponsible. You see, you don't just buy an F-35. You subscribe to a system. The United States controls the critical software, the data links, the entire global supply chain for parts. In fact, the spare parts sitting in our own Canadian bases don't even technically belong to Canada until they're bolted onto the jet. If we ever wanted to use our own planes for a mission without American approval, well, we couldn't. And it's not just retired generals sounding the alarm. This is a concern you hear from everyday Canadians, taxpayers who are asking if it's really wise to tie our national defense so tightly to a single ally, especially one that can be, let's say, a little unpredictable at times. So Canada is standing at a crossroads. One path is the F-35 path, full integration with the U.S. military. You get that deep interoperability, but you also get the high costs and a real loss of sovereign control. The other path being talked about is a mixed fleet, by a small number of F-35s for those joint NATO missions, but by a much larger fleet of Gripens for our own domestic needs, patrolling the Arctic, defending our own airspace, all at a lower cost and with Canada holding the keys. And so here we are, full circle, that ghost of the Avro Arrow. It's impossible to ignore. Once again, it's a choice between embracing a foreign-controlled system or investing in our own domestic capabilities in our own sovereign control. In the end, this decision is about so much more than a fighter jet. It's about what kind of nation we want to be. The choice we make is going to echo for decades, and it will define our place in the world long after these planes have made their final flight. What we decide will say more about our vision for Canada's future than it ever will about any single aircraft.